Hi, I'm Jim Richards. I'm another lapsed journalist. I spent more years than I want to remember covering politics for the Sacramento Bee. I want to bring you back to, way back, to some comments that you're making the state government. And the idea that the states are mimicking the federal government. And one important respect at least in California, that isn't true. And that's uh, government by ballot initiative. And um, quite arguably, the reason California cannot govern itself and balance its budget is all the ballot initiatives. Uh, Op 13, <coughs> which really had the effect of shifting this, the tax base to sales taxes. And Prop 98, which guarantees 55% uh, of the budget goes to the schools. And and both of those are, are good ideas in great conflict. Um, my question is, I, I'm surprised that ballot initiatives, which do appeal to extremes, have not caught on everywhere else. It seems to me that um, there's a ton of money in it. Um, do you see that in California, California cancer yep. spreading elsewhere? Let's go back to this guy for my next question. Possibly even to the federal government. Well, no, I, I don't. I mean, the ballot initiatives, I guess, are all kind of popped into the game at the round of the progressive era. And, and it was partly as a, because of the general sentiment that it was good to have democracy and all that, and partly because the state, so many state legislatures were so corrupt that, that, that getting around that, this is a way to kind of get around that. Um, I, 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 I think your, your diagnosis of what has kind of screwed up California because of initiatives is, is, off, is on the money. I still am in favor of it because of this weird fantasy that, that they will someday be used to really fix California in an interesting way. Um, I mean, there was a, there was a, there was a campaign earlier this year to call a constitutional convention for California through a ballot initiative. And the, the, the convention, as I understand it, was to be, instead of being elected, it was going to be chosen like a jury. It was going to be chosen by law. And it would be a couple of stages. First, they'd be kind of different conventions around California, and they would, they would send representatives to hire and find, be a final group. But it would all be done like a jury pool by lot, and that thereby taking out all the, the interest group politics that would be involved if it was elected or appointed by, by the present politicians. I think that was kind of wonderful. Uh, and one thing that, uh, that, that the initiative does is it does offer an alternative to violent revolution when, when all else fails. I just worry that this, with the sclerosis of our federal structure, the difficulty of amending it, that, that it's good to have the possibility, at least at the state level, of a big leap forward, a big, a big change in, in the structure of government. And if you leave it, it, if you just kind of freeze in the status quo by not having that safety valve, then you close off that possibility, then maybe, maybe you'll get slightly better governments in the, in the short run. Does California have anything good for us? Well, my only reaction, I'm from New York. We don't have ballot initiatives, and we were worse off. So we managed to do it uh, all by ourselves without, without, without any issues. I don't know, I don't think we're worse off than California, but I guess oh, we're giving you a run for our money. Yeah. <laughs> which, which one has the biggest debt? California? Yeah, but gee, look at look at what we have. We're gonna we're gonna have may, maybe three governors in this gubernatorial term, and uh, you know, just what's going on in New York Senate. I mean, it, it makes me hang my head. And and the whole bad government of the state for decades. It's, it was a state that was when I was a child it was it was very prosperous. You know, it was just running to the ground, running right into. The and initiatives have nothing to do with it. We don't have it. We do have ballot. We do have ballot uh, items, and we can vote.
down bond issues and, and that there are certain things that do go on the ballot and sometimes that causes the situation the, the state to be slightly more screwed up than it would be on the map of it. And you have many more taxing authorities than we do here in the county. Well, because we created them. I mean, you know, so, so that, that's, we, that's a little project we've had in the last 50 years. We have too many governments and too many elections in the United States in general. And I think it's part of the reason why there's a lot of hostility to politics. Even though we revere the framers and revere the Constitution, we think America is number one and the American way is the best way, we hate our government. <laughs> there, there is a slight, there is something off about that. And I think one reason we do have way too many elections, way too many, and some of them are for things that there shouldn't remotely be, like, like boards of education or, or uh, judges. It's, it's, Really nutty, and no one can possibly, I mean, life is short, we all are busy, no one can possibly be informed about what all these elections are that they're expected to vote in. We, we just have too damn many governments. Hamilton was right, abolish the states. <laughs> Let's get rid of some of these layers of endless government that we have. Well, in Virginia, we've perfected the permanent campaign, and, and one manifestation of it that's about to resurface is the, the rematch permanent campaign, as George Allen is about to become the speaker at the Shad Viking down in Wakefield on the 21st of uh, April. Everyone will start writing about how he and Jim Webb are about to have a rematch. <laughs> Before we go to our last question here, I just wanted to quickly interrupt and get your, both of uh, your thoughts on recent news um, that the Texas School Board, a uh, Christian uh, conservative majority on the Texas School Board, had decided to remove Mr. Jefferson from their curriculum, specifically from a list of important 18th century revolutionary thinkers. And to add insult to injury, they replaced him with John Calvin. Um, your thoughts on that uh, recent decision? I hope they didn't say that John Calvin was an 18th century figure. <laughs> uh, why, why didn't they like Jefferson? Because of his... Uh, I imagine it would have something to do with the fact that he was the, the uh, person who coined the phrase a wall of separation between church and state. Wrote that to the Danbury Baptists. Right. Um, who were, you know, they were on the same side in that, uh, that particular thing. Look, the, I got interviewed about a piece on that. Um, by Russell Shorto, uh, who, who wrote a wonderful book about the Dutch background of New York history. But, um, and he asked me, uh, were the founders, uh, was this a Christian revolution? And I said, you know, I said, look, you can go into a lot of detail about the religious opinions of various, various of the founders, who, if you take off Tom Paine as a kind of outlier, they go from New Jefferson's theism uh, all the way to the real piety of, of Sam Adams. But, but they, they very specifically did not uh, want to enshrine uh, or give any religion a uh, private place in the United States. And that, that was something they were all united about. And the, 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 the religions, many of the religious churches, many of the churches in this country also agreed I mean, especially the Baptists, who were catching it in the neck a lot in the late 18th century, and had good reason to know better uh, 